And as the name implies, this is meant to design cantilever walls that have this kind of heel on its bottom base. And if you already know how to use stream embedded walls, string cantilever walls, it's basically centered around the same idea. So we would start, of course, uh, setting out the type that we're going to work with for this phase structure, the materials that we're going to use, covers, crack, uh, maximum crack width, and so on. And of course, once we finished setting up the physical properties, we could go on with the loads that we're going to sustain, if we're going to have a seismic action or not. And once we're done with that, we can continue setting up the different soil layers that we're going to have. You can see here in this example, I only have this one layer in here, and I'm actually going to edit it. So you, take a, so you can take a look at the properties that we have for the materials that make up this soil. You can see that we can set up physical properties like cohesion, internal friction angles, as well as parent and submerged unit weights. And of course, you can work either with the built-in properties that we have for soil, soil types, or you can customize that data to your liking as well. Just like we did before in stream embedded walls, we can also work with different phases. And when we can when we can set up our wall in here, you can see that instead of being a continuous linear work, we can also work with these different kinds of spans that can either be centered to the infill or can be offset it to different sides as well. You can see that what we're doing in here is just setting up a very basic uh, model that will be used later. So we will automatically add all the river and carry out all the different checks, just like we did before. We can also add different kinds of loads to the phase that we're going to work with, as you can see in here. And this is going to be taken into account when we run the analysis, which is just a click of a button away. And as you can see, it's going to design and analyze all of the rebar that we've generated right now. And just like we did before, we will have a full report with description of this reinforcement and all the checks that we've done accordingly. In this case, we're working with the Euro code, as you can see, and we're citing at all times the technical code that we're working with. And just like we did before, we would be able to generate the drawing as well. Quite similar, basically, as you can see. You can add that to block and so on. Accept, accept. And there we have it. Now, can I ask you a question, David? Is there a possibility if the person that is doing this project uh, wants to change the rebar that has been specified? Of course, this is just a rebar that has been generated by the software, but you can always customize the diameters as well as the spacing. If we were to switch to the reinforcement tab on the bottom left, we can see here that we have the traverse section with all the different reinforcement that has been analyzed by the software. But of course, if you wanted to change, let's say, the diameter of the reinforcement, or if you want to change the distance between the bars, that's something that we can do as well. And of course, this will be taken into account when we run the analysis later. Well, I appreciate that because I think it can also be done with embedded walls. I just I didn't show that area. So perfect. Thank you. And of course, if we were to regenerate the drawings, this would be reanalyzed and we would have all of these reflected into our new drawings, of course. You can see here that now we have the diameter that we've set out manually in the reinforcement top. The next software that I would like to show you is called Box Culberts and it's available in our structural suit, as you can see right around here. And with Box Culberts, you can, you can either work off of the XF or the WG drawings, or you can work off of the wizard that we have included into the software. Let me show you here. Let's create a new file. 
And let's use our assistant, our wizard that is for straight, skewed, or general box culverts. Let's create a skewed box culvert just for the sake of this demonstration. And as you can see, it's just a matter of setting up the different values for all of these magnitudes that we're seeing here in these drawings. So we can change things like the, the height, the span, and of course, the lens that we're going to use to skew our box culvert. Same thing with the wing walls. We can set up the angle at which they are positioned. We're going to put them, let's say, at 45 degrees. And if any of those sides we would like to just keep empty with no wing walls, that is, we could do that as well. We take into account also the life loads and moving loads. So if in case you have a roadway on top of that, we can always add it as well. And of course, we are working with a skewed box culvert, so we can always skew the top roadway as well. Just a matter of adding the degrees in which we're going to turn it according to the drawing. And just like we did before, we can set up the kind of soil that we're going to have both on the end fill as well as under the actual box culprit. And you can see that by default, we have a series of materials with its physical properties that if necessary, we will be able to edit later. And of course, last but not least, we have to take into account the loads that we're going to have both in the top roadway as well as inside the box culvert. And you can see that by default, we have some generated types that are linked to building codes from around the world. Of course, you can always customize the bottom slab searcher, as you can see here, to make it a live load or a dead load. And once we're happy with the final result, we can click finish in here. And you can see that we have a brief report with all the data that we have inserted. And as I mentioned before, we can modify the values that we have inserted later. So once we click on here and accept, we will be created with our final result. We can see that we have generated a 3D model accordingly as well. And of course, we can edit this model at any time. So if, for example, we would like to edit any of the points of our lateral walls, that would be as easy as just moving around the axis that we're showing in here. And of course, if we had a DXF or DWG file, we would be able to snap all of these nodes to the drawing that we would have underlaying. When we do any changes, they would be represented into the 3D model that we have in here. And once we are happy with our 3D model, we would be able to carry out the design and the analysis of all the rewards that we're going to have in here. So let's click on here on design all. And now I'm going to generate in real time the rewire that's going to be inside of our box culvert. You can take a look at a report with all the assessments, with all the checks that we've done. And as you can see, this is being generated previously in real time as we are speaking. And in this, uh, in this case, for example, I'm working with the American standard just for this demonstration's sake. And we can take a look at some of the checks that we've performed internally according to the building code that we have selected. And of course, if anything were to fail, we would be able to spot that in here. This has not been the case, thankfully. And of course, we can export this into a PDF, Word, or HTML format if necessary. And of course, we can always send it directly to a printer. Same thing applies with the drawings. And if we were to switch here to the reinforcement tab on the bottom left corner, you will see that we can take a look at some of the reinforcements that we have for the whole module, like the top, bottom slab, section slab, and so on. And just like we did before, we can customize the diameters as well as the spacing and even the anchorage lens, you can see here for our traverse and longitudinal reinforcements. Same thing applies, of course, for the wings. And 
And of course, when we are done editing all the different diameters that we would like to apply, mind you that this is just the recommended diameter list that is being applied by the software. You can always customize it to your liking, as I'm going to do right now in here. And I'm going to mention something in the meanwhile. It's very common for people to be using a prefabricated structures or prefabricated culverts and stuff. And so if you need to pass an inspection and stuff, you can also enter the information of that culvert, even though it's a prefabricated structure, run the analysis and use this program to pass your inspections. Is that correct, David? Indeed. All right, thank you. And just like we did before, we can generate some drawings with all of this information. We can set up the scale. For example, we could work with a typical 1 to 50. And of course, the annotation size for the dimensions and the text. And just like we did before, we can even add title blocks as well. So let's click on here and accept. And we're going to generate all of these drawings right now in real time. And as you can see, we have here our final result with the layout automatically set up for us. It has the title block as we have set it up. And just like we did before, we can move around all the different details from our drawings if necessary. We can add things like, for example, we can edit the position of the different elements for the annotations for the measurements and so on. And of course, we can move the actual drawing throughout the layout as well. You can see that by default, we generate elevations and plans drawings, as well as, of course, the actual sections with the river, basically what we were messing around with before. And once we're done, we will be able to get here a bending schedule with all the different positions and diameters for all my river, as well as a uh, simplified bill of quantities that you can see here, setting up things like the lens and weight for all my diameters according to each diameter and the total weight as well. We also take into account uh, still leftovers as well. So if you want to have a very quick bill of quantities, you can rely on the software as well for that. And of course, once you're happy with your final results, you will be able to print this into either one file or multiple files as a DXF or the WT drawing. And of course, into PDFs if you want as well. So that would be it for the typical programs that we have for civil works, so to speak. But I'm sure that some of you know that we also have uh, other programs for structure for structural analysis that is for residential and commercial buildings and they are SEPCAD and SEC3D and some specific elements like the ones that we've seen right here can also be modeled in SEPCAD and SEC3D and if you allow me I'm going to show you a brief showcase of some projects that have been done with SEPCAD and SEC3D in the real world that is of course. We can see here in our project gallery, we have some examples sent in by our clients where they have applied all of our software to design their structures. And with SiteCAD, most of the time we can design residential or commercial buildings like this one. But of course, if we needed to design, let's say, a short span bridge, there's no problem with that whatsoever. You can see here, for example, that we've designed this short span bridge which is this one right around here. And this building is still standing nowadays, as you can see. So if you want to design something that goes further beyond what you would normally design with a post culvert, you can easily just design a reinforced concrete short span bridge like this one easily in SideCut as well. If you wanted to design a box culvert, but a non-standard one, you can also use SideCut for that as well. And actually, you can see in here for this underpass, for this tram line, 
the analytical model that we generate in SideCut. So if you wanted to design that in SideCut, it's also completely up to you as well. And you can reap the benefits of working with SideCut as well. That is automatically having all the dead loads, live loads, drawings, and so on. In regards to Site3D, most of you, I'm sure that have used it for things like residential, commercial, and industrial buildings like this one. And you can see that the main difference between SiteCAD and Site3D is that in SiteCAD, we work directly with L2D views like these ones right here. Meanwhile, in Site3D, we work directly in a 3D environment, as you can see. And of course, this can be used to design shortcut bridges as well. Like for example, you can take a look at this bridge right here over this gully that has been designed in Site3D. And you can see here that we work with nodes, bars, and concrete shells as well. Let me show you here the 3D view. And in Site3D, we can work, of course, with steel bars, as well as timber, aluminium, mass concrete, and so on. So if you want to work with short span bridges like this one right here, you could easily use Site3D as well. Of course, with Site3D, we can work in a full beam environment. So if you'd like to continue with the pipeline that we have for steel, you could start in Site3D, and then you can go on with the rest of the tools that we have for complex connections with finite element analysis, as well as for shop drawings with serene steel and the like. But of course, this is not just limited to steel. If we wanted to, we can even work with timber elements like this bridge right here. Let me show you the 3D view. And of course, like what we did before with all of our software, we will be able to generate reports and drawings with all the elements that you have modeled in here. So both SideCAD and SideCD, they are not meant specifically for civil works, but as you can see, we can use these tools to design our very own custom civil works. If what we've seen before, may seem somewhat limited, or if you want to reap the benefits of working with all of these tools at the same time. And of course, all of them will be linked to BIM Server Center. So if you want to continue on with the different pipelines that we have for steel and timber, that's completely up to you. I believe that we've reached the end of this presentation. I hope that the solutions that we show you today can be implemented into your workflows. And if you have any questions, we will uh, make sure to answer them in the chat as well as through our technical support department.